Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots and today I'm sharing either a sewn or a hot glue tiered tray gnome. Look at him, he's got those little shoes. If you'd like to make him, boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here. Turn on those notifications as well. For those of you who love this pattern, I do too. It's the Icelandic Love You pattern. It is a perfect tiered tray size gnome for top or bottom tiers. We have a lot of stuff in the pattern and I'm gonna only use part of it today. I am using flannel for my hat and body. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hem the bottom of the hat so that I don't get any fraying. And all I'm gonna do is just flip up that bottom all the way from the left to the right, even along those curves, about a quarter of an inch. So for those of you who are hot gluing, you can clip or pin. And for those of you who are sewing, you can clip or pin. I'm just using pins here because I had them on my table. I'm going to speed this part up so you don't have to watch all of that, but basically there's going to be a little part on the curve. If you're new to doing that, don't worry, overlap the curved pieces, okay? It will all be flat after you sew it. So speaking of sewing, we are going to sew right along the edge of that one quarter inch. If you are sewing this, go ahead and line that up with a one quarter inch marker on your sewing machine right near the foot or the presser foot. And if you don't have that, I do recommend putting a little piece of tape right on your sewing machine so you can be sure to keep that straight. This is going to be seen on the other side, so I just wanna you know, remind you that if you're sewing, use a coordinating color thread. You don't have to use white like I'm using. I just use that so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see here, now we are all ready to follow the pattern exactly. We're gonna snip off any of our threads. We're gonna put right sides together so for those of you hot gluing, you're just gonna glue up exactly where I'm pinning right now, which is the entire open back. And you can see this pattern is so cool because the body and the hat have this cool slope to it. All right, so for the body piece, whether you're gluing or you're sewing, you're just going to use the same one quarter inch seam allowance. For those of you gluing, I do recommend using a detailed tip glue gun on projects this small. If all you have is a regular tip glue gun, don't worry, just be very light on the glue application. When you get to the base of the body, you're going to line up the two pieces. I like to anchor one, fold each of the two pieces in half and match up right where they crease. Now, for this body pattern, you can pin it or clip it all the way around, doesn't matter, but be sure to tuck the base inside. You can mushroom it out, but I just think it's a little easier, especially if you're brand new to putting patterns together. It's a little easier to tuck that base inward and then pin those edges all the way around. So you can see I can mushroom it out or just tuck it inside. Now, if you are new, don't worry. This pattern, you've cut it correctly. All of the bases are sized exactly per the style of the, the body that we want. And so you may have to play with it in order to roll out those creases, but just move it between your fingers. I promise you it will be perfectly flat all the way around. So you can see here. So you take it to your sewing machine and you're gonna use again the one quarter inch seam allowance. You can also put this where the body is facing up. That is your personal preference. I like to do it this way because I can move the body out of the way, making sure to do two things. Number one, I check that my seam is still one quarter inch all the way around. And number two, I can see the two levels to make sure, or the layers to make sure that they both are getting caught in those stitches. Speaking of getting caught in the stitches, we wanna make sure that everything, we can pull on it and it's fine whether you're hot gluing or sewing. Turn everything right side out and if you are using the pattern's dart system, just dart it at this point right here and it explains that in the pattern and I've shown it in other videos. I'm gonna put a playlist at the end of this for the Icelandic gnome pattern so you can see all the gnomes I've made with this so far. I do recommend snipping your seams on anything like that's gonna have a larger seam. So I use uh, pinking shears to do that. If you want, you can just use regular scissors. It's no big deal. Just make sure you don't cut through your sewing stitches or through the glue. 
For the shoes, if you are brand new to sewing, do not attempt these shoes. They're very, very small and it's kind of frustrating. Uh, but you can also use the Dollar Tree booties, cover them in felt, make the bottom match your hat. So I'm using felt here with the mat matching pattern for the hat, just for the little bottom pieces. Um, so I just made two of the legs that come with it. And it's, I'm going to turn them into booties. Okay, so now we're to the assembly part. So I'm using poly pellets, non-odor, non-moisture, poly fill, beard, our pattern pieces, two shoes, and something for a nose. I'm going to start by putting just a half a cup of weight in here. If you do use food products like beans or something larger like gravel, just make sure you don't add more of your weight past the opening, okay? And then you're just going to be sure to tuck up polyfill all the way up into the tip and then around your um, base so that you can get it nice and smooth. Now for those of you who are new to this pattern, you can do two ways. Number one, you can put a wire in it and number two, you can go without a wire. It's 100% up to you. I'm gonna show you the wire. This is just thin floral wire. There's nothing special about it, but because it is so thin, we actually want to double it up. And so I'm just going to round off both ends. You can see I have two round ends. I'm going to stick one all the way down and I'm going to flatten the rounded part. And then I'm going to take the other rounded part all the way up to the very tip. And then I'm going to put it in the channel. So you can see I actually put it inside this little channel and then glue it down over that wire. Why we do that? is because it will not move. After people move it, the body and the hat around and all of the gnomes, the wires will detach and move around in the body. By securing it in the channel, we won't have that. You can either glue or sew up this opening in the back. I'm gonna glue mine because my hat is going to be affixed. If you do make reversible hats, I've shown that this hat, this pattern has a reversible hat instruction as well. You can make all season hats if you want for this and they're really great. Like I said, for tiered trays or small items, they're great for shipping too because they're really small and light. I just measured my faux fur. I'm using white Mongolian faux fur. This is a long two and a half to three inch pile. And then I'm just going to make a rounded U shape with a nice little half inch drop. And that's gonna give me a very fluffy, very full beard. So I'm just making sure my drops are the same size. And now I'm just gonna make sure all the pile is pointing down and I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to cut only the fur backing. You can see there's no transfer when you cut only the fur backing. So I'm just gonna cut it all the way across. Do be careful because X-Acto knives are sharp. But you see that cutting mat underneath? That's only for liability reasons. You actually will never cut that far. I like to give the beard a quick brushing before pinning it in place just to get an idea of where everything is going to go. I am going to now actually put this aside and get my shoes. So the pattern actually makes it long enough where you can make full legs sticking out uh, in front, or you can wait and put a piece of styrofoam in the body to make it stand on dowel legs. But for me, I'm actually just wanting little booties that are really close to the body. Again, if you don't sew or if you're new to sewing, you can use the plastic Dollar Tree booties for this. These are about the same size, just a different shape. Now, you see that white? I used white thread so you could see what I was doing, but I'm going to just color it with a black Sharpie marker so no one's going to see. Once I get those stuffed, I do make sure they're about the right same, well, size and then I dance with them because I can't help myself. All right, so because I don't want a ton of extra fabric, I'm just gonna cut off about a half inch from these and then I'm going to actually tuck everything in. So I'm going to glue it down in on the edges and then I'm gonna tuck it into itself and then glue that to the body. I find that that is the most secure because you have a lot of solid area in which to glue. Now for those who love hand sewing, you can absolutely sew these to the body. You can, I'm not gonna stop, no one's gonna stop you. I'm just really lazy. And so I don't want to do that. All right, so I'm going to start assembly. You're almost done with this, guys. Really quick to put together. So, so sweet. So I'm just going to glue on the beard. Again, you can sew that on if you would like to torture yourself with that much hand sewing. I'm sorry, I find it torturous. Uh, to sew everything on by hand. Unless I'm making like a really big quality piece, I'm gonna glue it. 
So here, if you're new to adding noses onto fur, you're going to split the fur to its fabric backing, and that is where you're going to put the dollop of hot glue in order to press on your nose. Your nose can be a wood round like I'm using, it can be a bead, it can be a pom-pom, it can be nylon stuffed with polyfill. There's no limit to what you can do. Once I get all that on, I'm actually going to now roll down the top of my little booties, and then I'm going to press the tops in so it creates a nice big tabletop of fabric that I can glue to. So one side goes down, other side goes right next to it, and then the back gets tucked in. So now it's all flat and I can glue it directly to the body um, after I do the second one. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to make sure the beard is out of the way because that's one thing, if you get hot glue in the beard, it's best just to cut it out. And you can see me putting a very generous amount of hot glue on this, move the beard out of the way, and line them up on either side of the nose. And you can kind of see that bend in the back. I, it's hard to see from up top, but oh, I love it. All right, so you can see right here I have these white threads showing through. Here's my big trick for that. <laughs> yeah, that's just a Sharpie. All right, so I'm going to slip on the hat. You can glue it down or you can use the reversible method. You can use the interchangeable method. But let me know down below in the comment section, what do you think? I'm also going to put the pattern link down below. And here is an Icelandic lovey playlist for inspiration.